a big part of permaculture is uh, integrating, right? All of the projects feeding into each other. You'll see I left some stems like this guy and this guy. And actually this one is priority mulberry and that one with the pink. These two I'm going to graft. So all of these, these three, um, I left for grafting some really nice mulberry onto. So that's another project feeding into a project. So it's also giving a lot more light to this blood orange. So that's just going to jump. Um, but this is where all that uh, sandy soil came from. I'm going to take it over there, see where the, um, the urbanite is all stacked up and it's going to connect to a little pond and kind of keep it all connected. Um, so let me jump over to the other side. All right, so here's a little pond project that's a couple years old and it, um, it's a lined pond so it holds water um, really well and the only source feeding into it is runoff from the neighbors, from under that fence. This side of the pond, there's already a little trench started. I'm gonna continue that trench over to where you see that red shovel. That's the other side of the trench. So the projects are all kind of connected in that this one had an aesthetic um, functional you know quarrying the soil to take to the other side um, but here it's also going to be holding back this bamboo clump and all of this mulberry brush and those mulberry trees are just going to come out and then this is going to become a really nice space for me to bring in some uh, you know a, a little uh, Asian feel because of the bamboo but some actual landscaping so these oak trees um, I brought over here and I'm using them as trellising for this year. So um, there's so many great tropical vines. Uh, it's really good, you know, group of plants for me to grow here because they're so tough and love the heat. Um, so I'm coming and taking like this guy is actually just a, an oak tree cut off at the base and sticking it in the ground. And I'm going to leave all this cassia. It's, it's you know, frozen back dead um, as trellis as well. I do have to protect the uh, roots of the jicama like I did with the yams and so that just leads into another project. So I've got a lot of buckets and I normally don't have this many. This is because this last winter I collected them for freeze protection, for filling up water and having it near the trunks. And it was really cool when I just kind of put that intention out to the world. I actually posted about it but a friend alerted me to a pile of, of buckets on the curbside. So I've got probably half of these just from trash piles like right when I needed it but um, I'm not gonna keep all of them it's a lot to store and so this entire line right here is um, going to be repurposed I'm gonna cut the bottoms out and use them for protecting transplants from the chickens because I do like to plant out in the landscape especially in my tomatoes and peppers and so um, I'm just I have used these before it's a really great system um, so I'm about to cut the bottoms off of all these pots and then get them placed out, get them filled with my compost. And then I also, I had these guys, um, which are, I just collected them years ago from uh, a dumpster and I uh, just you know, knew they'd have some value. So I'm also cutting tops and bottoms off of them. They've become brittle um, and I'm gonna use them for planting more of the yams and the bigger vines. Time to get to work. I've got to fill these uh, pots now, so that just feeds into the next project. I have not harvested any material from the run, and so it's a great opportunity. I know I need to bring in new material. It's been on my to-do list, and so um, pulling out a little bit will uh, give you guys a look at um, what the chickens can process when you put a little grain in it. Um, this looks like some really good stuff. And again, this hasn't been harvested ever, so this is years worth of stuff. But it's definitely very, very rich and fertile. So I'll harvest some from here, and then I'll have a new project of bringing in some new bags of leaves. So I'm taking leaves to the run, but I'm not just doing it without thought. I'm actually sorting through all of these different bags of leaves for their highest value. And so um, when, the way I did the cold protection, I put down way more leaves or I brought out way more leaves than would be valuable to use around some of these trees. This tree was totally buried in leaves and so I had to move a lot of that material off that direction and I still feel like it was a little too thick in some spots. So um, what I'm taking to the chicken run are um, 
decomposable bags that are least broken down. So um, I can give them some raw material because there's so much biology in that run um, soil underneath that it'll really grab it and start it breaking down quickly. Um, but then I'm also setting aside any of these bags that are non-decomposable, like here, the um, soil essentially forms on its own. So this is um, a very much just grass clippings, was very hot, but I can just leave this sit because this bag's not going to break down and um, I can use it as, at a later date. So I've got you know, a pile of non-decomposable um, um, and over here you see where um, Angelina's sitting on top of it. Those bags are all going to sit a little bit longer and just uh, increase their value just by being there. This was just another example of why it's good to um, not open your leaf bags right away. So it looks like this chicken run stuff is just gorgeous and I'm really excited. You guys know what a tomato would do in this or what some summer squash would do in this. It's uh, a lot of potential there. And so I'm spreading out the buckets you guys saw me cut and filling them up with a little bit of compost. Um, the buckets are for protection from the chickens. The thought behind this is that by fi not filling it up all the way, um, I'm keeping it more out of view of the chickens. Uh, I don't think that it's necessary for uh, a tomato or uh, squash to be up in that much light. It actually is providing a little bit of uh, microclimate protection as well. But just anything to keep the chickens from digging in it. Um, I think if it was near the top, they'd jump on um, and dig. So let's see, here's the test. Can she dig? No. So they might get walked on, but I don't think they're gonna get scratched up. And um, tomatoes are not very palatable to chickens and squash, uh, well, we'll see what they do with them. So yeah, some buckets are even deeper and have even more space to protect those little seedlings. And uh, I'm planting tomatoes tomorrow. It's almost Valentine's Day, so it really is time for us now. Um, but out here it's a little colder, so, some, so sometimes they get that frost nip. I have lost like all of my plantings from like a, a March frost. There's so much fertility in this kind of system. So like getting to plant these buckets actually allows me to bring in more material and have my plants protected. So it just provides a lot of yields. There's just, um, I'm gonna mound this up even higher, but just this is what was here. And it's mainly pine, but I mean, look at all that mycelium running um, through the pine needles and the stuff underneath is um, just gold. I mean, so dark but soil, um, great drainage. So picture even more bags coming in because I need places I need places to put all this material. I'm focusing on tomatoes and summer squash right now. So zucchini and yellow squash. And um, in about a month, I'll get peppers and put peppers and eggplant out here. Eggplant, I usually wait even to like May because um, it's not as much of a rush. Peppers, we sometimes get a little um, yield in like May. Um, but mainly they're also for the fall. So there's not a big rush on either of those. So I've got all these um, bags that are gonna break down and um, a lot of good fertility already in it. One thing that I, I wanted to show you guys a good way to do it is that um, these bags will always have the biology most at the bottom and it's this little surface. And so what I try to do is I actually try to leave that in place. This is a decomposable bag. And so if I kind of like pop it, um, then I have that surface that is still catching water and slowing it down, um, not allowing it to go through as quickly, and it will help this to break down even faster. So just like that, um, the bag is hidden and gone. You know, they're like made of cornstarch or something's easy. So um, that's a good way to, um, open your bags. Now, if it was bone dry, it wouldn't matter. Actually, if it was bone dry, it'd be more of a reason to try and leave some or just open it up um, on top. Um, and if they're fully broken down, like this is really wet, then there's less uh, incentive to leave a bottom on it. But this is some really cool material. I don't, oh, this is, look, I got free soil. That was a hanging basket. So that's some really nice peat and um, fern roots. So one other thing of just kind of valuing resources, I have a lot of goldenrod out here. I mean, it's great for the bees and beautiful in the fall, but I've been using the goldenrod stems for chicken protecting. This is a comfrey plant that the chickens had just destroyed and buried, and there's tons of energy in there, so it'll be back. But um, I just made it a little shield. And sometimes there are distraction projects. So I was moving the bags of leaves from this tree to the chicken run, 
and they were all breaking open and I found a potted plant, right? But it had a peanut growing in it. So it's a little bit early, but I'm definitely excited to see if it'll take. Uh, I've tried peanuts out here and the rabbits always, always get them. They love to eat peanut greens. So um, I'm gonna put it in one of the big planters with the broccoli. It's gonna be getting a little light now, but these broccoli are gonna be gone before you know it. So this pile is also getting harvested. Um, this compost is about a year old and um, so very fully broken down. Um, straight leaves, grass clippings, that kind of stuff. And so it's gonna go in that bin and then I'm gonna bring back the wire and I'm gonna fill it up just to make more space, move these uh, leaves around. So I set up my wire and I refilled it and it's already sunk back down about halfway with leaves. So I did get around to grafting the mulberries. It was late and my cyanwood wood had maybe been mishandled. So we'll see how it goes, but I did some cleft grafting. I threw in some buds, <laughs> did some bark grafting. Um, most of these are bark grafts. Um, here's a whip and tongue. I was just treating it like practice. So we'll see how they do. Mulberry is pretty easy. So I'll probably get some of these. Um, this, the scions or the buds, they're all um, going to be pushing really soon. So I did some Persian, but I'm not sure. I think that was freeze damage when I collected it. Here's some more buds up here that I put in this big chunk because I'm definitely going to cut this off. Here's a triple bark graft. So this is kind of practice. Um, so it's some Persian Illinois Everbearing and um, just for fun I had <laughs> Pakistan Scions and I uh, mishandled them and I used I, I grafted some but basically I ran out of sign wood for mulberry which is kind of disappointing. Um, I had some big trees that I wanted to do but um, yeah there's always next year. So March is our driest month here in Houston and it's something that um, if you're dry land farming like me, you really got to be aware of, got to know, and that's why I'm rushing. It's really not even to beat the heat as much as it is to, um, to plant while there's still enough moisture for stuff to get established. All of this annual stuff, it's real tough um, to bucket water to these things, and I don't want to do it. So I need strong plants before we start drying out, which is right now. We might not get an inch of rain for all of March. Um, it's kind of the standard. It's just a dry month here. But things are going well. Um, the citrus smell is uh, all over the property. The blooms are nice. Look at that. And the bees are busy. Let's see if we can catch one. In fact, they're all spread out. There's so much. It's like, nah, we got other, we got other places. We'll let you make your video. All right, you guys, this video was jumping all over the place. It was kind of an experiment to see, to try and document everything that's going on around here um, because it's all happening so fast and it all is really connected because it's all part of the garden itself part of the larger whole so that's a glimpse of the maintenance and you guys saw maybe uh, well a, a fraction of all the projects that happen in that amount of time because it's been about a month since i posted um, so i want to end this video on integration um, and stacking functions with the number one the primary function stacker and that is this big beautiful sea of mulch behind me and just how it, it is the the gateway to a successful garden is just understanding the soil and the mulch and the biology so here you know we've got it you know on this blistering sunny day um, it is getting warm but um, it's keeping the moisture in and it's trying not to let it go and then here in these bags what I was thinking to show you so it's I really need to protect this but it's starting to dry out but here inside just from winter just by leaving it is beautiful you know ready to plant into um, biology compost so I don't I don't want to get let it get solarized much more I want to get this shaded and mixed in I mean these bags are I didn't have to do anything that was right off the curb so when it comes to stacking functions it's your irrigation it's your fertility it's your weed suppression you know just a simple act of covering what you don't like it's uh, it's pretty important stuff. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the rambling video and uh, I'll catch y'all later. Peace.